Hi, everybody. It's Jeff Fisher of High School Football America. And football is back in the state of California. I couldn't be happier. As you know, I lived there for six years in Southern California and took a long time. Uh, the season had to be postponed until now. And we're going to go to the Central Coast right now. The uh, head coach at uh, Mission Oak High School is Mike Machado. And he is joining me to talk a little bit about, uh, I, I guess, coach, it's almost like Christmas, right? Well, for sure, for our kids and for the, our communities. And, yeah, yeah, I mean, we've, you know, we've been trying to get this going. So I would definitely say it's maybe a couple of Christmases wrapped in one. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that. Uh, you guys, uh, we were talking before we rolled the tape here. Um, you guys are located kind of uh, equidistant between Fresno and Bakersfield in the central section of California. For those of you that don't know, uh, about California, a lot of different sections. And uh, if you've been following on High School Football America, there's been a lot of um, rules that had to be uh, achieved before teams could even start practicing. And, and, and from what Coach told me, and he's going to tell you right now, uh, Coach, you guys were a little bit ahead of the curve. As a matter of fact, when it comes to games this weekend, everybody's scrimmaging. You're actually playing a game. But let's talk about what it took so that you guys were able to kind of get into the weight room, onto the practice field, and, and get started to get to the point where you can play tomorrow. Yeah, so um, obviously we were a few weeks ahead of other teams because we had been allowed to work in pods and do some outdoor training. And so we were able to get um, our district to approve us moving some of our uh, racks, weight room racks outdoors and, you know, socially distanced and bringing in small groups of pods of kids that could start to get back into the weight room and just become active again. Because we knew that if this time came ever in California, we wanted them to have that opportunity. So we were a little bit ahead when it came to the conditioning part. Um, Really, uh, for our section, um, who our section commissioner is Ryan Toss, he said that, you know, obviously we needed 10 full practices, which is normal for our section anyways. Um, and then, you know, you needed a, a, an acclimation period of, you know, five days. So because we had started with those pods and the outdoor training and we had, were well beyond those initial uh, acclimation days, uh, they, you know, at that point, they made the decision that, you know, if we did want to or could, Get to a point to where we could schedule a game clear all the protocols that you know we could actually play a game um you know march 13th which would be tomorrow so we started to push for that date to see if we could get there and um you know we um cleared some major hurdles yesterday and so now we're here and um it's a go so we're super excited and um there's been you know just you know obviously with you know everything going on in the uh, united states it's, you know there's a lot of things going on with this so uh, and nothing is ever feels like it's for certain at this point. And hopefully we're coming out of that. But uh, we we look like we uh, we're there. So I mean, there's still you know we're West Coast time here. So there's still you know 30 hours or so before we kick the ball off. So um, we're just you know hoping that we stay on track and you know we don't have anything happen in the next 30 hours that would you know you know set it off track. So yeah, as I as I said, I got my fingers crossed here for you guys to get back and actually playing. Uh, Coach, you talked about some of the protocols and um, you're the first coach I've talked to about this because, you know, every county had to kind of clear hurdles and numbers had to drop to a certain point in that. But then, um, and if I'm mistaken, you could correct me if I'm wrong here on this, but um, some counties may be doing, you know, pre-COVID, some may not, depending, I guess, on the sport. I don't know if it's just football, but it could be water polo and all that. But you guys had to go through COVID testing, right? And you did that, what, on Thursday? And how'd that turn out? Well, so uh, obviously yesterday, yeah, we, so there are high contact sports um, that, you know, the state decided on um, football was obviously one of them. There were a couple others. And when, uh, you know, our district, our, sorry, our uh, county is technically still in the purple tier. Uh, we have this tier system. So as long as um, our, our uh, county was in a purple tier, we needed to test for high contact sports. Um, and we weren't allowed to even, you know, start that process until we fell under 14 cases per 100,000. So a couple of Tuesdays ago, we hit that seven day average, which allowed us to get into the 10 days of practice. And so um, with that came, you know, still all of the basics that, you know, that the state feels is, you know, best for everybody uh, to keep everybody safe. So socially distance, uh, masks up, you know, um, and just trying to keep distance and wash your hands and wipe things down and do all those things that, um, that the state feels that, you know, puts us in the best uh, position to stay healthy. And so we started, you know, we we're doing those things and uh, we got to a point to where we were able to secure testing um, uh, last week for yesterday. 
and we were able to clear the protocol. So, um, you know, it's, I mean, it's a, um, the other part is, you know, this is not college football, so we're not dealing with adults. And so when you're not dealing with adults, um, you know, you have to have parental um, consent for a lot of things. And because there had not been any groundwork laid for this, um, we were kind of, you know, tackling it daily as it came to us to try to get kids back on the field. And we just tackled all of the hurdles daily and, you know, just try to make it to the next day. And uh, this week was um, definitely a hurdle, you know, after hurdle, but we can just continue to clear it. And I would tell you this, like our, um, you know, our school district um, is amazing. Um, our superintendent is all about getting kids back um, and obviously in a safe manner. Uh, it, you know, Tony Rodriguez is our superintendent. He's amazing. And um, we have COVID people in charge of the district office, Cami Aldaco, um, Jason Edwards. And so all of them, you know, have really made the push to get us to where we're at today. And, you know, they're, you know, they want kids to safely return. And without their support, this doesn't happen, yeah. you know, this week or maybe next week. So, you know, it's real. And in our obvious, our athletic director, you know, David Flores, who's probably worked, um, you know, two months worth of hours in one week. Um, it has, you know, obviously been able to help us clear all these hurdles. So, um, you know, I think that it, you know, it speaks volumes to, you know, the people that are in charge, um, trying to, you know, allow these kids to play. And, you know, finally this morning, you know, I think that, you know, we finally, everyone was comfortable with what had happened with the protocols and the testing for the last three weeks. And, you know, we're going to have an opportunity to watch these kids play football. And I mean, it's, I'm just excited to watch them play. I mean, I'll be, you know, schematically we're in you know decent shape but i'm just you know it's going to be fun to watch football in the central section I think, so <laughs> no doubt about it we're going to talk a little bit about that in a second but i was just thinking of a kind of a fun question for you here because obviously COVID is serious but um uh choose between you know uh, waiting for the COVID results to come back to see if you can play on saturday or uh the decision to go for it on fourth and short uh maybe around your own 45 uh, I'm, Which more I, I'm an aggressive guy, so that's easy for me. Um, I would tell you this, I would have rather sat in a dentist chair for four hours yesterday than wait for the results of the COVID test to come back. So if you can imagine that level of, it was just such high risk, you know, high reward. Um, it's just, I mean, all of the, you know, and it's really coming down to this one sequence and it's, um, it was, like I said, I would have, I would have fell on the sword a thousand times in other situations that are terrible compared to waiting for everybody to clear the protocol yesterday. It was, <laughs> it was extremely um, nerve wracking and this was a lot of just hope and prayer that, you know, that this, that we were doing the right thing for kids and uh, that this was the right thing for our community and our school district. And so that's kind of where, you know, you just, you just hope and pray that all those things happen. You know? Yeah. No, and, and, and the kids too, you know, uh, it, it, I can't, you know, I'm 60 at this point. I'm not a teenager, but I remember being a teenager. I was pretty disciplined, but you know, when things were uncertain in that you, you didn't know, tell, tell me a little bit about some of the things you had to do as a coach and as the coaching staff had to do to kind of, especially for the seniors, right. Who could have not had a, a final football season. What were some of the things you tried to do to keep spirits up, keep them going, keep them motivated saying, yeah, uh, we're going to get to the point where we may actually play on March the 13th. You know, it's, I, that's a great question. I mean, it was just consistently daily, just, you know, obviously I see them every day, um, weight rooms and, uh, you know, athletic periods. So just, just talking to them about same stuff, keeping them motivated, you know, trying to keep them working out, say, you know, don't be the guy that shows up, you know, and hasn't done anything for several months. Um, just so those types of thought processes to keep them uh, motivated, you know, thinking if you do get that chance, what do you want that to look like? Um, and then just, you know, letting them know that like, you know, what is going on with you right now? And, you know, tell me what's going on at your house or, you know, what are some of the frustrations or things? And, you know, let me know, like, you know, what do you need help with? And just, you know, trying to keep them involved. Um, you know, we did, uh, I think it was like, I want to say maybe October, November, we had, um, you know, uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, FCA, uh, was able to put together a movie night for all football players um, in our area, outdoors, you know, socially distanced, safe. So just trying to create avenues for kids to have some type of experience that was safe and that, you know, everything was, you know, um, approved by our counties and so on and so forth. So just a lot of that stuff. Um, a lot of coaches checking in with players. Now, I was a new person at the, so I probably known the kids at least. And so that was a challenge too, because I just showed up in July. So 
I'm getting to know these kids without actually seeing them. And so that was a challenge. And, you know, so we're just trying to build relationships as we're going. And, you know, we were able to do some things in the fall and trying to get ready for that, um, that January date that we had initially set um, for the spring. And so we had some time together in the fall. Um, but besides that, it's just a lot of just daily, like, you know, I mean, really just kind of talking to them like I would talk to my own kids, you know, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? What's going on? What are your frustrations? Let's see if we can, let's see if we can focus on controlling the controllables. You know, we talk about that a lot. So um, just those types of messages. It's tough though. I, you know, I, I have, you know, I have, you know, a 13 year old daughter and an eight year old son. And I, you know, I see them, you know, with some struggles of just, you know, not having the opportunity to do things that they usually do. And, you know, I can feel for them, you know, so I, you know, definitely have a, a connection with my players and over the last 17 years of coaching, like I know what they're thinking, you know, as me being a player, me being a parent of my own and then trying to, you know, keep these youngsters together. It's just, it's a battle. I mean, it's, you know, it's, but I mean, it had to be done to, you know, that's what our state felt. That's what the United States felt that, you know, this was the best um, course for us to, uh, to preserve life. And so, I mean, we're just, you know, continually trying to, uh, you know, preserve life and keep these kids, you know, in the loop and motivated and have the support that, you know, we can give them at this point. Yeah, I have a ton of friends still coaching friends in California and they would just keep calling me or texting me and say, Jeff, are they really playing in 36 other states? And I'd have to keep them pumped up to let them know that somewhere, somehow this is going to, you know, get, get to the point where we can get back there and you guys hit the field on Saturday, which is great. Um, tell me a little bit, you know, this, this interview was set up by my good friend, Z Enriquez, and uh, he had talked to me a little bit saying, you know, Mike's, Mike's story is a good one. You, you started early, you maybe didn't have the success you wanted early, but now you've been turning around a couple of programs and, and hope to take uh, uh, Mission Oak to, to the next level. So uh, tell me a little bit about that evolution for you. Um, you know, what did you learn when maybe things weren't going right? And what has, what has, what has given you the success to turn around programs and, and become a successful coach? I mean, so I was at Mission Oak as the offense coordinator in 2011, 12, and 13 season. So that was kind of my jumping off point. I had built myself up to a point to where I felt that, you know, I was ready to, you know, become a head coach. Um, so I, Mission Oak was a new high school in Tulare. It was the third high school. And I had come on after Mark Gambini had opened it up. And a couple of years after, I think it opened in 2008. So I came a little bit later. And so, you know, I was helping them build it. And I just felt that it was time for me to, you know, have that opportunity to do something. So, um, you know, I just, I left Mission Oak and took a job at El Capitan High School in Merced, which was going to be the third high school in Merced brand new. Um, and I just felt that, you know, we would, you know, me being young at the time, I was maybe, I don't know, 30, 31. I thought that I, you know, I, we had, we had a ton of success over three years. I mean, we might've lost five games in three years. So ton of success. Um, and I just felt that that would just follow me to, um, Merced, which obviously, you know, me being as young as I was, I had no idea what I was doing when I got there. (laughs) And so you get there and you start to realize that uh, there are a lot of moving parts in a football program. And, you know, you, you feel like, you know, um, as an offensive coordinator or a defense coordinator, but there's just so many things that happen off the field that, you know, require your consistent um, attention. And so I think that me being young and, you know, the program's brand new and I'm trying to get this to a point to where I was when I just left a place, you know, eight months ago, which was, at the point that we lost the last game, I think we were ranked uh, third or fourth in the, the southern section in the state. They had not put the bowl games in yet, so we had, we were we were close. We had made a, a significant move, and so I had absolutely no idea what I was doing in Merced. I was turning it out as I was going, and I probably you know learned more from that experience of the three years I was a head coach there than any anything else. Um, and I learned a lot of not what to you know what not to do. Um, I learned that, you know, kids obviously, you know, in certain, in different areas, you know, they have different cultures, they have different ethnic backgrounds, they have different socioeconomic levels and maybe areas that I have been to. And so I just really didn't understand that there's, you know, a complete adjustment to wherever you go, um, regardless of, you know, what, where you're going to, and you need to understand those things going in. So, um, like I told people all the time, and, you know, you know, there's two, uh, you know, you get hired and, then, you know, the clock starts, you know, to, to either get fired or you're going to take the next job. So obviously uh, we were building that thing and I wish that I would have had a little bit more time to finish that out. 
um, because we were uh, moving in the right direction. We were winning more games every year and I was getting my feet under me, but um, you know, obviously they, you know, they said, you know, resign or, you know, we're going to go in a different direction. So at that point, like, I, I get it. Like I can understand looking back because a lot of times I have head football coaches, you never look up. So you're just constantly daily, just trying to push it, you know, forward every day. And so when you look up and you look back at those three years, you're like, man, I made a, you know, tons of mistakes. I mean, uh -huh. uh, you know, all the time. And so, you know, self-reflection, I think is big. And I tell my kids all the time, you know, you need to reflect who you are as a person, student and athlete every day. And so, you know what you can get better at. And so when I left there, um, I, I came back into the central section. That was the San Joaquin section, technically, but um, about two hours back south, I came to Porterville, uh, which is a small town about 20 miles uh, south and east of Tulare. And uh, just took a different, I knew what I did wrong at Inverset. I knew what went well in Merced, but I also remembered what I, we were doing well in Tulare at Mission Oak. And so I tried to marry that stuff together as, as best as possible. And the first year, I mean, we were four and six, but we were kind of on the way up. And in the last couple of years, it just took off. And um, I don't know if it's because I now have an idea what I'm doing or I'm just, you know, <laughs> I just caught lightning in a bottle. I'm not sure yet. Um, but, um, you know, that was kind of that progression. So now coming back to Mission Oak, I'm uh, pretty familiar with the type of kids we get. Um, I know what went well for me in Porterville. I know what went bad for me in Merced and well. Uh, it wasn't all bad there, but, you know, just, you know, more probably mistakes than good decisions there out of myself. And then, uh, so now we're here and, you know, I feel, you know, you just grow as a head coach so much. I mean, I would say that they say as teachers too, like it takes you really five years to kind of feel comfortable in a classroom. I would say as a head football coach, that is, pretty accurate number it does take a while and it might not necessarily be your first stop it might you might not figure it out until that second stop as a head coach because um you just it, it's never sometimes you just need to end to reflect on everything that's happened and then start again and go okay this is what i'm gonna do moving out you know and, and moving up and into this new program this is how i'm gonna you know you know address certain things you just address things different so yeah i mean that was kind of the story uh, that was basically 2011 to now 2021, which is where we're at now. So very interesting uh, decade of football, you know, um, you know, kind of moving forward. So a lot of success early, not so much, pretty decent amount of success in Porterville. And now we'll see what happens in uh, 2021 spring, which will be interesting. So it's not yeah. raining here. So that's good. It's no rain. We got good weather. I mean, we're lucky. We're in the central section, you know. You know, hopefully the sun stays out and we have a you know a nice dry spring which would be awesome so yeah um, wow. see, yeah some teams up in tahoe like i we were i was talking with coaches and they're like in you know feet of oh. snow I'm like man that'd be awesome too so it's just it's just uh i just you know you just got to embrace what you get you know like i said it's two christmases wrapped in one and we're just gonna have a bunch of fun on saturday and hopefully we continue to hit all the protocols that we need to continue the season and we get four or five games in it's going to be amazing yeah, it, it, it's funny. I've been talking about the snow. Everybody was like, well, Jeff, you can get hurt in the snow. I'm like, yeah, but it's snow. It kind of feels like football. And there's Virginia, you know, places like that that have had some snow. New York, they had a couple of feet of snow. It, it just added to it. I think it, it, it made the perfect ending to it. Coach, uh, as we wrap up here, um, I don't want you to give away your pregame speech, but, um, you know, you guys are going to, again, we'll keep the fingers crossed, playing tomorrow. Um, sure. Give us a little sneak peek. What are some of the topics going to hit uh, that are uh, mixing football and, and, and life and, and post-COVID and actually playing, uh, what are those things that you're going to talk to your team about? You don't have to give me the whole speech. Just give me a little sneak sure. peek. I would just, I mean, the message tomorrow is just going to be that, um, one, you know, if you believe in something and you believe that something is right, um, you need to, as that's, you know, that's your opportunity in the United States to, you know, to pursue that. So it's important to pursue um, what you feel is best for people, um, even though you might be in the minority um, for, for, you know, which is okay. That's why you have the United States was built. Two, you know, be thankful for every second that you have today. Um, because as we know, um, we have a five game schedule, but we don't know what's going to happen after Saturday. So um, enjoy every second of it. Um, play every play like it's your last, um, you know, as far as the seniors and, you know, I just think, you know, take some time tomorrow and just, you know, stop and, you know, don't worry about the win or loss for, a, you know, at least a little bit, a minute or two and just, you know, you know, kind of take that in because there are, there are, um, you know, school districts 
you know, that are border us that are not playing football that have decided to opt out. So um, there are a lot of kids that would, you know, envy and give a lot to be in your cleats and helmets and shoulder pads tonight. And so um, just enjoy it, um, you know, and have a great time. And I mean, I, I'm a, an extremely highly competitive guy, man, but like, I don't, I don't know how much the scoreboard is going to matter tomorrow, quite honestly. I mean, it will once we get going, but like it doesn't, it's not really even moving the meter for me at all at this point. It's all about, you know, giving them the opportunity to play. So I think that'll be the message is just enjoy yeah, we, it, you know. Have we're just so happy for you guys. I mean, it's, it's, it's a long time coming. Like I said, a lot of friends out there have big old smiles on their face. And, you know, I, I expected, you know, a couple of those really competitive guys like yourself say, well, we don't have the postseason. But, you know, that hasn't come out at all. I mean, there's certainly, you know, off the record, we're talking a little bit about that. But the fact that you're playing, that's the thing that's making it happy. I'm just I'm just so happy for you, for your kids, for the entire state of California. You know, I got my fingers crossed uh, we get through uh, the next, like you said, 30 hours and, and, and the lights light up tomorrow and eh, time to play some football. So thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. Good luck. Uh, and, and, and hopefully you get through that entire five game schedule. That's, that's the goal, but I appreciate you having us on and, you know, advocating for kids and, you know, spreading the word that California is playing now, so. Thanks, Coach.